Hello everyone, welcome back to another great episode of Hannah's Cuisines. Today we're starting off the month of November with a blast. Um, fall is here and um, I have a chili, an award-winning chili recipe here that um, is really, really requested by a lot, by a lot of people. So um, I'm gonna do things a little differently this time. I'm not gonna review the ingredients. You will see the ingredients pop up on the right-hand side of the um, screen. If you look down under the description, you will find the full recipe and the method on the bottom. Just because this has a little bit more ingredients in it, um, as I be as I'll be putting it in in and making the chili, I will go. I will show. I will give out the measurements as well. So I'm gonna turn on my stove here, and in my stove, I am going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. And you don't need much in here, just, just enough. Now I like kind of searing my ground beef in the oil. If you guys don't like that, you can just um, make your ground beef and then um, if you want to add olive oil, that's up to you. I just think it fries up really well. So let's go ahead and add our ground beef in there. I'm using about two pounds of ground beef because we're making a lot of chili. And um, the great thing about this chili is you can prepare the ground beef mixture a day ahead and then before you go to work, start it up your crock pot in the morning because this is going to be done in the crock pot. That way, you know, when you come back from work, your chili will be ready. And the nice thing about this chili is once you get all the ingredients in there, you're done, you just let it do its thing in the crock pot for a good six, seven hours. It can be lesser if you like, but the more the chili is in the crock pot, the better it's gonna taste. It's just gonna taste amazing. So we're just gonna go ahead and brown the ground beef. So you can see that all the water from the um, ground beef has evaporated. I usually use um, 98 percent fat free ground beef so I usually never have any fat rendering after and then we're going to be adding um, I'm going to be adding eight ounces of chopped mushrooms and you can totally omit the mushrooms, but I love the mushrooms in this dish because it gives it a really earthy taste, and I just, I absolutely love mushrooms. So these are gonna get cooked up more. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and add one large chopped onion. And this is basically going to caramelize in the ground beef, and so it's gonna season the mushrooms and the ground beef really, really well. I just want them to get a little translucent before I start adding our red and green peppers in there. this mixture I'm going to add a good tablespoon of fresh ginger and garlic and if you have followed me in all the videos you know that I cannot cook any meat or fish dishes with, without my ginger and garlic I have to have that Okay, I'm not going to salt this right now just because we're using canned tomatoes and um, the Rotel tomatoes. We're, um, we're going to do a taste test in the end. If we need it, we're going to add the salt later. So to this, I'm also going to add about half a teaspoon of black pepper. We'll also add some more in the chili. And we're going to add half a teaspoon of cumin. If 
you could smell this it smells amazing in here okay to this i am going to add i've got one large green bell pepper chopped and i've got one red bell pepper chopped large one and i've got one jalapeno that is diced thinly or uh, diced really small we're going to add that everything in here now you want to cook this just for a little bit so that the peppers can get a head start before we start adding our tomato juice in there. You can see that the onions have gotten really translucent. So at this time, I'm going to add uh, about a good four tablespoons of tomato paste in here. Now, I like cooking my tomato paste. I feel like when we add everything in our chili and we haven't cooked our tomato paste, no matter even if it cooks for six, seven hours, I still find that there's a raw taste um, to the tomato paste that I don't like. So I'm just gonna cook that a little bit right there in the middle. And this will really bring out the flavor in the chili. Okay, so about a minute or so, you just wanna cook it for about a minute or so. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add about four cups of tomato juice in here. and. I uh, used to make this recipe with um, um, vegetable broth, and then I didn't have vegetable broth one day. So I thought, you know, let me just try adding the tomato juice in there. And I'm telling you, it made a world of difference. It just tasted so much better. Okay, to this, I'm going to add a good half a cup of Louisiana sauce in there. And I think this is another thing that makes a huge difference. So if you're looking for the sauce, this is what it is. Love the flavor of this sauce. Can be used in anything. Um, uh, for example, you can use it for as a dipping sauce for chicken wings and um, lots of other can be flavored in sour cream and stuff. It tastes amazing. All right, now we're just gonna be dumping a lot of stuff in here. I'm going to do one, um, one 14.5 flask ounces of diced tomatoes. I am going to do a big, large can of pinto beans, which is right here. And we've got one pound of pinto beans. And the reason why I had it in the sieve is because you always want to rinse your beans because they have so much salt and stuff in it. Then I'm also going to add one 10 flask ounces of Rotel tomatoes, which is basically diced tomatoes and green chilies. Okay. Now we're also going to add some chili beans in here. And I'm going to do two cans of it's about 15.5 flask ounces of chili beans. And I wanted you to look at it. It's got um, pinto beans, chili peppers, onions, and garlic in a zesty tomato sauce. So we're going to do two cans of this. And I'm telling you, this makes a lot of difference. A lot. I just love the chili sauce or the chili um, beans. Okay. Now, one thing that I love in my chili, and that is red kidney beans and i don't have any in the house right now but i will get some and i will add some in there um i'll go out right now and get some and put them in there so when when we're done you'll be able to see um the complete product with the red kidney beans in there 
All right, I don't have Worcestershire sauce, so I have some tamarind sauce that I'm gonna put in here, because basically Worcestershire sauce is made with tamarind. Okay, so we got all this stuff in here. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to be dumping it into my crock pot. Now, I, before I dump it, I wanna show you that they have these um, slow cooker liners and I'm sure most of you know um, that these are available, but for those who don't know, I thought it would be, uh, it'd be nice to just show you guys. Usually I put the liner, you just it's a little big, you know, like so, and you just put it in your crock pot. And what I usually do is put the seam underneath so it kind of stays. It should stay. And these are amazing because if you're taking this to a party or if you're having it for game day, no cleaning it basically um just you know you empty out chili and then take the plastic and throw it out so i'm going to dump this in my crock pot and then we're going to add all the seasoning in, seasonings in there so our crock pot our chili is in the crock pot to this we're going to add one teaspoon of oregano or sorry that was basil one teaspoon of oregano I'm going to do two teaspoons of paprika, a good Spanish paprika. We're going to do four teaspoons of chili powder. Now, I did tell you guys we were going to add black pepper, but I am not going to add back black pepper just because I did a taste test and it's quite spicy. And then we're going to do a teaspoon of cumin. So we've got all that. And then we're just going to give it a good mix. Now I'm going to set my um, crock pot on high. Once it starts boiling or bubbling, I'm going to lower it down to low and let it cook up for another four to five hours. So we'll come back in about four to five hours. I'm gonna go ahead and add the um, red kidney beans in there and I'll show you what this chili looks like. So it's been seven hours and finally, I think our chili is all done. It's gotta be, right? So let's go ahead and open it up and see what it looks like. So a couple of things that I like to see in the chili is you will see a, just a little bit of oil floating on top. And that's that olive oil that we had put before and um, that really makes the, takes the, makes the chili taste amazing. So at this point, before we serve it, you wanna make sure that we do a taste test to make sure that the salt in there is enough Salt is enough, but it is spicy. By adding the Rotel tomato can and adding a whole jalapeno, it is spicy, spicy for me. Um, so you might want to either, um, if you don't want spicy at all, then substitute the, or don't add the Rotel tomatoes at all and just do the jalapeno or do the jalapeno without the Rotel, whatever you wanna do but just so that the um, it's not very spicy, but this is spicy. So, and we didn't even add the extra pepper in there in um, our gravy. So um, it is all done. So this is how I am going to serve it. go and we're also going to add a dollop of sour cream oh geez I was trying so hard oh there we go well you can never have enough sour cream right so there you have it award-winning chili 
So that we started off our month of November with the chili. Make sure and subscribe if you haven't. We are um, going to be airing a lot more videos and uploading them to YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Rihanna's Cuisines. Hope you can join me here next time with another great video. See you then, friends.